This is the Corsair 2000D Airflow, and I've had my eye on it for a while. And at first glance, you wouldn't think this was an ITX case, but that's exactly what it is. And I know what you're thinking, Greg, there's no way anyone would want to build in this. Why would you opt for an ITX motherboard if your case is going to end up being this large? That's where the cooling potential comes into play. Apparently, this case can fit up to a 360 millimeter AIO and additional fans and a full-size graphics card, all while, at least in terms of desk real estate, not taking up a ton. It's you know, tall. If you want to lay it down, I guess, like this in an entertainment setup, yeah, it's pretty large, pretty long, but uh, if you stand it upright, it's freaking tiny. And I think there's a whole lot we can do with this, including sticking a 360 mil in here, because, well, we can, so why not? I hope you will enjoy this PC build. Stay with me. If you're sick of seeing that same Activate Windows watermark over and over, head on over to VIP SCD Key, where they have Windows 10 and 11 Pro OEM keys at a fraction of the price of retail. Just use the secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say goodbye to the watermark. And be sure to use your offer code SKGS for that so sweet discount. I want to give you a quick POV of what we're working with, especially hardware support wise, because, uh, well, from the looks of things, it's going to be quite crammed in here when it's all said and done. So first off, SFX or SFX L power supplies only, not full size units. We can fit three fans, it looks like, up front here, and then we're going to probably end up mounting our AIO on top. Now, we could put it up front, but the issue is we've got this power supply cage, and so that limits uh, our clearance. We could maybe put like a 120 up front if we wanted. Actually, you couldn't even do that because your motherboard's gonna be sitting here. So this large little square cutout is gonna be where your motherboard sits. And you can see our front IO is gonna be wired through there. I guess most of our connections are gonna have to come out the back. Yeah, that's what that hole's for. Interesting. And then our graphics card, this part I actually really like, it's gonna slot directly into our motherboard. We don't have to use a PCI riser of any kind, and that card's gonna sit lengthwise here. So you can see we actually fit a lot of fans. Um, it should have decent cooling as well because the panels are quite perforated. Here is what we're working with. Every single panel will have this mesh material and we'll also have an extra little dust filter inside. Now, if you look through this, it's rather restrictive. I'm sure this is quite porous, but when you combine this with an already meshed panel, I don't think it's going to work too well for temperature. So I've taken that out. Yes, it will probably cause a dust issue in the long run, but I'd happily take that trade off for better airflow, better cooling overall. Another thing you'll probably notice, your power supply is going to sit here, but your ports are going to be stemming from the top, which uh, that could pose a cable management problem. So Corsair have included these Velcro straps that run all the way down the top and back sides of the chassis to keep that power cable as tucked away as possible. I think that's a bit weird. They probably could have flipped this around and maybe routed it internally. I don't know. It seems like an afterthought. Corsair includes this cable, which is nice, but you can see how cheesy it looks running down the back side of this case. There's also no baked in handle for this chassis, which would have been nice. While it is a large ITX case, it is still rather portable. Now a brief explanation of parts choice, especially for our platform. I've gone with a Ryzen 7 5700G, still a, an eight core, 16 thread CPU. Nothing wrong with this really at all, but uh, it's not the most recent architecture, of course. And the APU is a bit of a, there's a bit of a question mark there because we're going to be obviously using a discrete card. Why would you use an APU? Well, for one, I had an extra one laying around. I have two 5700Gs somehow. I'm not sure how I ended up with two, but uh, they're both in good shape and I'd like to have at least some sort of graphics backup in case we have discrete card issues down the line. You'll actually find many of my arguments for this chip overlap with those uh, in the HTPC build video that we aired a few weeks ago. Essentially, hooking this up to a 4K TV means that we're not going to need a super powerful CPU because well, we're not aiming for like 120 or 240 FPS, our graphics card will handle most of the workload there. Memory was pretty straightforward, 16 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR4 for the win, and a one terabyte MP600 Gen 4 PCIe drive from Corsair. This board is an Asus B550i Gaming, and you'll notice this tiny little thing here, that is a fan, probably one of the smallest fans I've ever seen in a PC. I was getting ready to install this rear IO shield, but uh, we actually don't have a place to do that. It just kind of all sits there. We're gonna drop this straight in and it'll sit like that there. Had to remove memory to get to uh, front panel and some of the other things down here, but we're looking good so far. Next up is our tiny little power supply here. Now this is a fully modular SFX L unit. Like I said, it's a thousand watt unit, just a massive overkill, but I love it. I love the design. Also really like Corsair's warranties with these. And because I'll likely be laying this case down flat, so long ways, not standing up, I'm going to have the power supply fan face inward like so. And now that that's tightened down, looks like, uh, yep, it's gonna have to be 
flipped around. If I can get some slack here. Flip this cable around the other way. This is, yeah, this is just a little silly. Eight pin EPS here. We're gonna connect and then we'll have to uh, cable manage quite a bit because we're supposed to be putting fans here somehow. I can already tell you, zip ties are going to be your best friend when building in this case. And it's not so much because the case isn't roomy. As it stands, it, it actually is. There's a ton of space in this ITX chassis. The problem is, I know we're gonna be putting a lot of stuff in here that's not already in here. So the 360 mil AIO, that's gonna sit on top of all of this. I wanna make sure these cables are scrunched down far enough and then also I want them moved out of the way for an extra three fans to be populating this uh, rear bracket here. I guess this is actually the front bracket so when this is laying in the entertainment setup it'll actually be sitting sort of like this with uh, this area being the front. So we're gonna have three intake fans, 120s a piece, pulling in fresh air. We're gonna have the AIO assembly, the radiator assembly, exhausting some of that hot air especially coming from the CPU and then the graphics card is gonna be pulling sort of kind of fresh air in from the back, but we're gonna have to modify our entertainment setup a bit to, you know, be able to actually do that. Because without having some sort of airflow from the rear of the cupboard this is going in, the graphics card's probably gonna get too hot. We'll be going with Silent Wings 4s for intakes just to uh, help keep down on the noise. I can't believe six fans are going into this ITX build. That is pretty wild. Also, get an idea now for how cramped it is down here. All of these cables are preventing me from sliding this fan where I want it. Eight hours later. Thankfully, they all spin freely. Somehow we've kept all of these cables out of the way of the blades. I'm not sure how we managed to do that. I'm not sure how long it'll last, but uh, we'll take it for now. Now it's time for the AIO, which again is gonna sit right here. Luckily, this bracket is removable. Uh, that makes installation a bit easier, although I'm sure we'll still have some trouble. We've got pre-applied thermal paste. I'm just gonna set the cooler that there, is that right? Working conditions here are not great. Let's go ahead and get this plastic peel off. Oh, this is some stubborn stuff right here. Holy cow, come on now, get, come on. There we go, and a little more on top. Whoop, wait, whoops. You do not wanna know how tricky it was to maneuver this radiator in here, and we're using the Corsair IQ Link AIO, so this has very minimal cabling. It's all kind of routed through one central hub. We have a video uh, building with all these components. Quite expensive for what it is, but the cable management is absolutely necessary in a chassis this size, uh, considering all the stuff we've got in it. So that's our radiator. Uh, the tubing so far, it doesn't look like it's interfering with anything. That was my biggest concern going into this. I'm probably gonna zip tie the tubing to this bracket just to keep it out of the way. Uh, otherwise, it actually looks really clean. And lastly, our graphics card, which we have to slide in through this small opening here. This is the same RTX 3080 we paired with our HTPC build. Let's see how it fares in this case. Here we... Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to pick up this radiator again. <sighs> okay, <laughs> that, uh, that took a lot, but here is what we've done. So graphics card is in and I can see I've got the radiator just kind of sitting here right now. I wanted to show you the cable management further down, which is gonna be hard to see without bumping the ice up a bit. So there are the two eight pins. You can see I've zip tied them to the power supply cage just to keep them out of the way of the fans on the underside of this unit. And make sure that, you know, they don't snag or anything. And the card fits nice and snug. Now we can tighten down this radiator again. Take a minute to verify there aren't any cables being snagged anywhere. That's definitely a worry with this one. And whew, take a second to admire this work. Uh, much of what you have seen on video has been edited heavily. I have probably spent a good four hours building this, which that's pretty long for someone who's built dozens since uh, starting out on YouTube here. So I'm going to take a quick break. I will be back tomorrow morning. For you, it's only gonna feel like a few seconds. Here we go. You know what I just realized? This rig is pretty much finished. I don't know why I felt like ending the video there. I could have I could have roughed it. We, we're pretty much done. Just gotta put some side panels on, power it up, and uh, make sure everything works. I will give you just a glimpse into how this thing performs in games, but it's very similar to the HTPC we already built. Again, if you wanna watch that video, I will have it linked below, but uh, we'll give you, you know, a little something to wet the palette. Now, I do wanna mention just how packed in everything is for this build. I 
don't think the camera's doing it justice. There's literally no space in between here. Like <laughs> we're talking maybe half an inch or so between the fans on the radiator side and the tubing, the cabling from the power supply. It's all, you know, pretty dense. And I am a bit worried about that long term, but for now it looks like most of the cables have been routed appropriately situated. Uh, so if you want a challenge, I mean, the 2000D is, uh, that's definitely a good contender for that. I overall really like the look though. I think the black fans look really good. Just sleek all around. You can see the rear here if we move this dust filter. This is where our graphics card sits. So there is uh, not a stone left unturned in this rig. Every inch of space is occupied. And I think these side panels kind of hook in from the front like that and then just clip in. I thought they did on the rear. There they go. Okay, these uh, little captive thumb screws got in the way. You can see all your rear I.O. cables are gonna route through this uh, hole here at the bottom, or I guess just at the rear if you're gonna lay things down flat like I am. Uh, but you've also got this convenient little panel here to give you access to your motherboard. Again, no rear I.O. shield needed because, uh, well, there's nowhere for it to go. Let's see then, is it gonna power on? Nice. Wow, that's quiet too. I wonder why, because we threw some be quiet fans in here. I can hear the pump, that's good. Pump's actually the loudest thing in the rig right now. So uh, all looks healthy. It's defaulted to a, a white color scheme, which I think I'm gonna stick with. I might even turn the LEDs off again, because I don't really care too much about bling in a rig like this. It's not like you can see much of it anyway, just a hint maybe through the front intake fans, but all around a very clean, sleek, stealthy look, which I think many will appreciate. Things load straight into Windows, which is great. I already had an operating system on this drive from a previous AMD rig, but I did hop into the BIOS to tweak fan curves just a tad. Now, if you're worried about performance and 3D Mark Time Spy, you'll see this system performs very well, better than about 80% of all submitted results, which again, shouldn't be much of a surprise to many of you who saw our previous HTPC build video. That system had a lower core count chip uh, from AMD, but it was a generation newer. This is a higher core count, eight core, 16 thread CPU uh, with a built-in IGP as well, but it's an older architecture SKU. So uh, you can see kind of how 3 d Mark leverages core count versus frequency and IPC. Uh, all around this system, I think actually performed a little better, even though it has the exact same graphics card. But very smooth playback. This is a 1440p synthetic DX12 API, no complaints at all and no surprises. And because I enjoy living on the edge, the one game I'm gonna show this running is Starfield in 4K. I know that's asking a whole lot. Even of an RTX 3080, um, they are, I believe, including DLSS here pretty soon. It might already be baked into the game. I'll have to check as of time of filming, uh, but that should be on the horizon if it's not already in the game. I haven't enabled it here though. Uh, so this is just the plain old vanilla 4K medium preset, no upscaling, of course, no FSR or anything like that. And uh, well, somewhere between 40 and 60 FPS is, uh, to be expected with a game this intensive. That said, a lot of TVs today still can't push past 4K60, especially cheaper TVs, uh, so it doesn't really make much sense to have an FPS target of 80 to 100 in this case. Uh, if you're using a 4K OLED TV, let's say, and it has 120 hertz refresh rate, then yes, it might make sense, but for a game this intensive, I'm totally happy with 60, and the game looks super crisp, very clean. Mind you, there are plenty of other games out there, like GTA 5, the Forza Horizon series, that all run well above 60 FPS, in 4K with this RTX 3080. Also notice that uh, our CPU isn't really doing all that much. It's there, but especially in Starfield's case, it's not really being utilized all that much at all. So uh, you could probably cut back on your CPU even more than we have already here and be perfectly fine so long as your graphics card can pull the weight. Now I've gotta be perfectly honest, I am still sort of kind of on the fence when it comes to this case. I think the airflow is totally fine. I, th I love the fact that it fits a lot of hardware, but I, I don't outright love it and I'm not sure why. Um, it's not really the price. I mean, considering it's a Corsair product, it's not egregiously overpriced. It is expensive, but uh, it's, you know, it's not, it's not crazy, I don't think, especially in this economy. What I do think is crazy though is the fact that I have to route my power cable externally along the rear of the chassis. To me, that just looks really strange. It also bothers me that I can't install my rear IO shield, even though I know you're not going to see it. it. It's still just odd that it's not needed and kind of looks weird when you go about connecting cables back there. As is the case with most ITX cases, the SFX form factor required for the power supply is going to put a strain on the budget a bit. Unfortunately, those power supplies being that they're smaller, they just uh, come with a bit of a premium attached. Couple that with limited expandability beyond just a single full length PCI slot and uh, well, there's your ITX recipe. These issues aren't specific to only the 2000D. Of course, most ITX cases are gonna run 
run into these limitations, but this one does raise a few eyebrows because while it is, I think, fair on price, it's fair on airflow and it's fair on hardware compatibility. In fact, it's probably exceptional on the hardware compatibility side of things. It is large for an ITX case. It's just, I get it, they wanted to, expand for the sake of larger graphics cards, especially 40 series cards from NVIDIA, and they wanted additional cooling because, well, depending on where you place these, ITX builds can suffer from a bit of heat buildup. That's all fine and dandy, but I mean, if you stack maybe another half of this case behind itself, you've got a mid tower. Unless this fits perfectly in, say, an entertainment setup, or unless you don't have enough depth real estate on your desk, I don't really see a case where buying this would make any more sense than buying buying, say, a 4000D Airflow, which is roughly the same price and has way more hardware support. I can't imagine they're selling too many of these. I mean, that's not a knock on the case itself. It's got the traditional Corsair build quality, which I'm sure many of you have come to appreciate, but it's just, it's overlapping with too many cases on the market, not only from Corsair, but from other reputable brands. And maybe the 4000D Airflow wasn't the best comparison. I think, actually, the, the 220T is probably the better case to juxtapose with this one. So that has great airflow as well. It's a very compact mid tower, but it's also a fairly good price, around a hundred bucks or so last time I checked and has much more expandability. Again, full size ATX power supplies and ATX motherboards with several expandable PCIe slots. I mean, you guys get it, right? So just weigh the pros and cons. This probably isn't for most of you, but it was definitely fun to build in, presented its own unique challenges, especially when it came to cable management. And I do appreciate Corsair at least trying to, you know, stretch the limits of ITX for the sake of cooling and graphics card size, which they obviously have no control over. If you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. If you want to build something just like this, I'll have all these parts linked below. Let me know what you think about this build and consider subscribing if you have not already. We've got a few other things in the description you might want to check out. Do I want to spend time plugging all that? I just, just, you guys can read I mean, Patreon and Discord and all that stuff. Check it out if you want. I appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.